The Complete Magician's Tables by Dr. Stephen Skinner. This is the expanded fifth edition, which came out in 2017. The first edition came out in 2006, and uh, this now has uh, 840 tables of correspondence, uh, which cover pretty much everything and anything that you could possibly hope for from the Western esoteric tradition, and even some from the Eastern esoteric tradition, uh, since uh, Dr. Skinner is also an expert on feng shui, and uh, he also lists um, uh, I Ching correspondences. Uh, you would not buy this book for its looks. It's a uh, it's a uh, um, what's the name of the publisher? It's Golden Horde. Golden Horde. Um, uh, Stephen Skinner publishes the majority of his books through Golden Horde. They come with these um, rather pedestrian-looking dust dust jackets covered in labels. As you can see, it's not the cheapest book in the world. Um, the the back of the dust jacket. Uh, instead of talking about what's inside the book itself, it just lists all of the uh, works that uh, they probably hope you're going to collect. And let's be honest, you probably will uh, <laughs> if you're interested in uh, the Western esoteric traditions. Dr. Skinner is probably uh, uh, on on a par with with uh, Joseph Peterson. Um, competing for first place <laughs> as as most relevant uh, scholar on the matter um so yeah it's 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 is it i'm not even sure it is cloth bound i think it's just textured paper in fact it's it's it creaks when you open it don't know if you can hear that yeah um one thing that is nice so yeah you can see that the, the pages are uh, sewn and yeah it, the, the whole thing feel does feel a little bit flimsy however what is nice is that it does stay open more or less uh, wherever you open it so that that at least is 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 a positive um what is it well it's it's a it's a book of tables of correspondence. Um, the idea is that in in the uh, esoteric tradition, everything corresponds to something else. Um, there's a wonderful introduction, and I will, in fact, I will read it to you uh, uh, in the later part of this review, so that I'm not boring people who don't care. But I do want to address a major issue that I have with this with this book. Would I go back and not get this? Absolutely not. I mean, this information is solid information and it is complete information. And you could do internet searches for anything in here and not find as high quality uh, documentation as as what you can find inside here. Um, however, finding the information is a nightmare. <laughs> um, once you've once you've explored the book thoroughly uh, and and really made friends with it, then you get a better idea of where you might find information. But I start my my first question was. Um, what's the significance of the left leg? Okay, uh, so what are the correspondences in any tradition of the left leg? And I started and I thought to myself, right, where am I going to find this information? Let's have a look at the table of contents. Right, introduction, blah, 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 blah. The tables, oh, here we go. Oh, there's, everything's listed alphabetically except that there's only one listing per letter okay so i thought to myself maybe natural magic animals plants stones herbs and perfumes well it doesn't seem 
like that would cover the parts of the body. So where else? What else could possibly cover parts of the body? Keep going. And uniform timeline, what could that possibly be? Um, wheel of the year, sphere. Z. Zones of the mind, body and soul. <laughs> Obviously, if you're looking for the correspondences of the left leg, you need to think to yourself, Z, Z for zones. Uh, it's 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 a it's a shame. Okay, <laughs> uh, so then you have uh, the commentary. Uh, there's a list of figures. Now you you may see down here full list of individual columns. I'll I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. But first of all, uh, there is the subject order listing of tables. So of course second time you read through this, you know that there's a subject order listing of tables. So let's say that you're looking for angels. Let's see. A for angels. Oh, no. Astrology and then go straight to divination. So, yeah, no, no angels. OK, uh, let's say um, you're looking specifically for the angels of the Shem Hamephorash, okay, the 72 angels of the 72 fold name of God. Uh, yep, no, nothing there. Kabbalah, no, probably not what we're looking for. Mag oh, here we go. Magic, A for angels, the biblical, apocryphal, and Gnostic. Yeah, no, that's not right. Angels, okay. So here we go. Shem Hamephorash angels. And you can look them up. So. <laughs> Why isn't angels under A? <laughs> it is under A, but under the A that's listed under M <laughs> for magic. Uh, it's, it's silly. It's silly. Um, uh, let's, let me show you now that the last way in which you can locate information is through this full index of individual columns. And how are they listed? Alphabetically? No, they're listed in there in the order in which they appear in the book. There you go. <laughs> so, so yeah, big, big problem as a reference book, and it is a reference book. <laughs> um, I would, I would do a lot to get my hands on an electronic version, but unfortunately, uh, Stephen Skinner has uh, uh, a regular habit of scouring the internet to make sure that no one is uploading illegal copies of his admittedly very precious work. Um, but, uh, but then I think about Joseph Peterson, who has all of his work listed for free, uploaded with full diagrams, full translations, for free uh, on on his own website and you can um you can search them you can uh you can print um uh, individual diagrams you can you know um you you can you can cross reference so much easier when you can when, when you've got uh, electronic information, but uh, that's not available for uh, Dr. Skinner's work um, because he he's very very worried about about people not paying for his work. Well, I can understand that, but it certainly doesn't make the job of using his amazing tables any easier. Okay, so um, now that I've shown you what this is about. Let me show you a few examples. John Dee's Angels, for instance. Okay, so they're, they're listed. Um, uh, most of these tables include listings for... Uh, here we go. Um, zodiac signs. Um, <laughs> Also for, 
Sephirot um, and uh, elements, planets, and um, and s yeah. So that that's usually uh, here we go. So elements, for example, fire, air, wind, earth. Um, And, and yeah, and, and really whatever you're looking for, um, so the Latin name of, of, the, uh, of the flower, for example, this is uh, traditional magical plants of Albertus Magnus, uh, so the marigold, uh, then the Hebrew name would be Elios, and then the Greek name, and then the brief use to discover immorality. Okay. Um, pagan, pagan pantheons. already in a P sacred geometry with the uh, uh, conversion uh, factors so imperial inches to metric tarot correspondences wheel of the year So he's got uh, a few of the religions, so including Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, Kabbalah. Let's see some, for example, some of the tables here, the Sefer Yetzirah. Again, you have the Ten Sefirot, followed by the Elements. The equivalent letters, so the Aleph corresponding to air and beginning, which is why um, the Fool, the zero card in tarot, is usually got that Aleph on it, etc. So, I mean, the, the, the information is complete. So, yeah, you can see that I've, I'm a little bit conflicted about this. Uh, it's clearly an indispensable work, uh, but I, I, I have some, some niggles, <laughs> that's, that's all. So let me read to you this introduction, which is absolutely wonderful and which really explains very well why correspondences are so important in uh, any esoteric tradition. Uh, this book contains all of the standard correspondences of the Golden Dawn, as recorded in Alistair Crowley's Liber 777. So that, that pr previously was the only book to have attempted uh, the tabularization of all this information, but it was nowhere near as complete as, uh, as, as this. Uh, but it also includes a lot more, including the real roots of the tarot, <clears throat> Geomancy, the Olympic spirits from the Arbitel, uh, Mithraic grades and the hierarchy of spiritual creatures, be they angels, demons, intelligences, spirits or elementals. From grimoires such as the Liber Euratus or the Swan Book of uh, Honorius, the Key of Solomon, uh, which I did a review for last week, uh, the Lemegaton uh, being the Lesser Key of Solomon, uh, which I'll be doing a review for probably at some point next week. Uh, so the Lemegaton contains these books, uh, Goetia, Theogia, Goetia, or Goetia, uh, Ars Paulina and uh, Ars Almadel, and the book of Abramelin, which I reviewed last month, I guess. In fact, it is a complete set of magicians' tables. Okay, I'll skip this. Uh, we communicate by explaining how some new thing is like an existing thing. Or how one thing corresponds with another. That's how we communicate. Words correspond to our thoughts and ideas. Words correspond with ideas and the ideas in turn correspond with external reality. 
In fact, without such correspondences, we're reduced to grunting in a cave. With these correspondences, we can communicate. The letters of one language correspond with the letters of another. The words of one language correspond to the words of another because all our human concepts have similar roots. Even the letters that make up a word correspond with numbers and allow us to do the calculations of Iopsophy uh, and the gematria of the practical Kabbalah to investigate things which we otherwise may not have been able to grasp. Correspondences not only form the basis of communication, but they are also the basis of magic. There is a whole stratum of thought which relates to the emblems, colours, images, herbs and perfumes, which was much more accessible to ancient man and was still a part of Renaissance thinking, but which no longer forms part of the way we think at a conscious level. These correspondences are only vaguely guessed at by modern psychologists like Jung, who see the tip of the iceberg but cannot easily trace its roots. These roots are not always obvious, but they are there as part of the subconscious memories or the egregory of our country, of our culture, indeed of the cultures of all mankind. Magic is based on correspondences. Magic most powerfully uses them when they are put together in a well-constructed ritual. The denizens of other worlds and other spaces do not always speak our language, but they do respond to correctly assembled rituals, where the colours, perfumes, gestures and words of power are all attuned to the same wavelength. The whole science of magic before the advent of universal literacy was based on correspondences. Correspondences were used to store vast quantities of information, enabling feats of memory which are just not possible for modern man, who uses the written and electronic word to store his knowledge. Knowledge of these correspondences can help us understand the structure of thought and the nature of memory, as well as the techniques of magic. These correspondences can even be used to alter this reality, not just describe it. A book of correspondences, such as this, is therefore basic to communication. Communication between human beings, communications with one's own subconscious, even communication with angels and other non-human entities. In a perfect, holistic universe, everything and every non-thing is connected to everything else. But not everything corresponds to everything else. Things are divided into categories in order that they may function and that we may be able to think about them. Thus, in the beginning was the word, or the differentiation into yin and yang, or the light, or the first swirlings, or whatever you wish to call it. However you like to phrase it, the essential act of creation was division. This is also reflected in, bio in biological necessity, where growth comes about by the division of cells. Such division is also necessary to the structure of thought. Until we categorize and label, it is not possible to compare and contrast. Therefore, logical thought is not possible. Maybe the removal of such categories of thought might enable us to return to original bliss, but that is not the purpose of this book. That really captures uh, the, uh, the essence of, um, of, of what's contained here and, and the purpose of it. Um, could this be replaced by a quick Google search? Um, the answer is no, because Dr. Skinner is... Uh, a thorough scholar, and his information is trustworthy. Uh, this is his entire life. It's not a hobby. It's his, it's his job, and he's exceedingly good at it. Um, a, a Google search will give you answers from anyone's opinion, <clears throat> and it would be very difficult to know what is trustworthy and what isn't unless you already knew 
quite a lot about what you were looking at. This information is uh, is sound and although difficult to search, once you get to grips with uh, uh, how this information is stored, it's uh, it's it's invaluable, absolutely invaluable, um, and I, I I recommend it. Despite the high price, it's um, it's nowhere near this expensive. If you buy it on Amazon, uh, this is the this is the price of uh, of Skinner's books when they first come out, and then they invariably drop uh, significantly in price uh, throughout the years. So this one's been out for a couple of years already. So there we go. Um, the Complete Magician's Tables by Stephen Skinner. You're not buying this book for its looks. Uh, there we go. I hope you liked the video. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And uh, subscribe down below if you haven't already. Uh, thanks for watching all the way, <laughs> if you did watch all the way. And uh, I'll see you very soon with uh, some more videos. Bye.